This is the Thank You Ocean Report. The waters off of the Gulf of the Fairlands National Marine Sanctuary and Golden Gate National Recreation Area have been called one of the great undersea maritime museums in the nation. If we go offshore to the Gulf of the Fairlands National Marine Sanctuary, which is nearly uh, 1,300 square miles, and then the northern Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary, which is also managed by the Gulf of the Fairlands, that's another 1,400 square miles. So if we were to take all this area We're looking at over 300 ship and aircraft losses. Robert Schwimmer is a maritime archaeologist with NOAA's Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. Robert is part of a team of NOAA researchers and partners involved in a two-year project investigating San Francisco's ghost ships and aircraft known to rest on the sea floor and those that are yet to be discovered in this underwater museum. This is the first archaeological survey in Gulf of the Fairlands National Marine Sanctuary, and it is such an incredible study area to work on. There's so much history, cultural history, Native American sites, shipwrecks of exploration, to even the modern events where one particular shipwreck, the Jacob Luckenbach, was responsible for the San Mateo mystery oil spills that killed tens of thousands of birds. We were able to identify that shipwreck. Sometimes it's not the pretty history scene of what we want to convey, but it's awareness of the environment and protecting. And the beauty of shipwrecks, they're mysterious. They connect people to human stories. And we also connect people to the oceans and national marine sanctuaries and why they're important. What a great venue to share history underwater. There's so many stories to be told. Each time the NOAA team goes out on one of these expeditions, they usually spend several days at sea discovering shipwrecks and aircraft, which tell us a great deal about this country's past. We are a seafaring nation. We learn about the ships that have gone down, the people aboard them, maybe the cargoes that are left behind or personal items. In some of the shipwrecks that we explored on this particular expedition, there was loss of life. So we're also looking at the resting place grave sites of those less fortunate. Researchers are finding shipwrecks dating back hundreds of years. If we were to look at the bigger picture here of the 300 reported shipwrecks and aircraft, the earliest reported San Augustine, 1595, off Drake's Bay. So we're going from a time of early exploration to a time of modern events out here. Shipwrecks still happen. We still have modern collisions. Sometimes it's weather-driven, but even with modern aids to navigation, it comes down to human error. And the team also includes a biologist, because some of these wrecks actually become artificial reefs. As an example, one discovery was an unknown tugboat found in deep water, which has become home to a number of fish. When we approach shipwrecks, we just don't come in as a historian and archaeologist. We bring a biologist, because it's a multidisciplinary project. And we identified nine rockfish on the mystery tug, two wolf eels, a very large giant octopus that was living up in the bow. We had ling cod, and so it was a very active site. One of the indicators of finding shipwrecks, we find shells on the seafloor that fall in the depression and scour. That's a good sign. And when we start seeing fish, because, you know, it's basically a desert out there, except where you have reefs, well, a shipwreck's a reef. The NOAA team has many tools at their disposal, including remotely operated vehicles and a variety of sensing equipment to analyze data from these various dives. Reports will be written and incredible photos and videos are being taken so we can all share in this evolving story of maritime discovery and human history. My thanks to Robert Schwimmer. And here's your Thank You Ocean Everyday Action. You can explore shipwrecks online by visiting this website. I'm Jerry Kay.